feel like I get to like sit in on like a lesson with Melissa. People are gonna be so jealous. <laughs> like I'm just <laughs> sitting here. <laughs> like if she's doing my nails, it's like kind of the same thing, but at least something's happening, but I'm just sitting here. So Kara, they asked me to do a Valentine's Day nail and I was like, can you give me all your hearts? So yeah, all the these hearts person. right here are all the hearts we have in stock. And I actually think the colors are pretty amazing. I'm not sure what I'm gonna use yet mm. with this. It'll most likely be these two, but I don't know. You know me, I throw stuff in. What do you like? This one's my favorite. Favorite? I'll definitely use one of those then. <laughs> so I have those. I don't know, I haven't done it yet. It's just my imagination. And I'm definitely gonna put five colors in there. So, so I'm thinking from. these two. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking I might. And then I made a liquid art. And I made it kind of like a whiny red purple, more on the wine side, because I love this color wine. <laughs> and I made it with, these are liquid arts, and I figured, you know, a lot of people know how to use them with monomer, I put it in gel, and I used red and blue mm -hmm. to make purple. Gotta love liquid art. I know, too bad you have your nails off. I could be doing this on you right now, but I'm very sad let's right get now. started. <laughs> so I already built out my nail. I built it out with clear sculptor and base, so it's already here for me to roll. So it does have a sticky residue. I didn't wipe it, it has to have the sticky. So what I'm gonna do is come in here and this, okay, you wonder how I made this. A lot of people, I get that question a lot. Yeah. Because it is a monomer and typically you use it, it's a colored monomer. So typically you use it with an acrylic powder. I probably wouldn't use Flex because it'd be a little more runny. I'd do like a build or a clear sculptor in the tube. You could even do a build pink and you mix it in with it until all the little lines are gone. So with the lines in there are the liquid. Mm -hmm. So I mix it until they're all gone and it evaporates, then the color is just left in there. So that's that how you're great. able to do this. And you can store all this, right? If you have yes. more after. I always recommend make your colors for the season of this. Store them in your little, our little containers we have are white and black so the light doesn't hit it. And you could just pull them out to use them. Custom okay. colors. Custom colors. So I think I'm gonna use this little light right here right now for a minute. So I just decided to cure it a little bit. Then I think what I'm gonna do is use what's on my brush and kind of fade it up. I'm gonna do a fade. Mm. I was wondering if I should do full coverage, but I think I'm gonna do a little fade. Oh, it's nice. It's a nice color too, because it's still kind of deep for winter, but like it's still in theme for Valentine's Day. So That's what I was Good thinking. Balance. Thank you. So I'll go ahead and cure this real quick. Now I noticed you wiping your brush. Like this is a pretty pigmented color. Yes. So if you wanted to move on to a different color or back to clear, like what would you do to clean it? Like, That's a great question. Pretty much what I'm doing right now, how I'm wiping this, I could literally pick up clear after no more comes out. See how it's starting not to come out? Mm -hmm. I could go into clear and I'm gonna do it right now. You'll see and it won't transfer. Some people like to work with two brushes. When I'm really into a lot, I probably would have two if I'm doing a full set and jamming mm -hmm. because then I'll just pick up that brush, not yeah, have to clean it. Time. It takes less time. But being that it's a demo, I'm using one, but that's a great question. Okay, so now this is all sticky. I'm gonna open the colors I'm attracted to right now. So I'm gonna use these, so that's seven colors. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, I have my base gel and I'm gonna get my brushes that I wanna use. I love this brush to pick up like chunky stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I think I'm gonna glitter press on this first. So, and I think I'm gonna come in with a little bit of crushed pearls. I'm Melissa favorite. I, I love this color because it brings out the prettiest colors and so, like with every color it matches. Mm -hmm. And on dark, it kind of looks jewel tony opalescent. Then I'm gonna do, let's do some little slippers. So I'm creating a background. And see how you can't really see where it stops and starts? Mm -hmm. You kinda can, but it fades really nice. Okay, I think I'll use a little more of this. Okay, I think I like that. So I got this, I have little um, little glove, glove finger gloves. I don't know what they call them, but it just fits the finger and I use that usually for this, but if I don't have it, I'll use the inside of my, my tab. And I might as well use this little light again, make sure it doesn't hit my gel. So the reason why I do this is the dispersion layer still has cure time. Mm -hmm. So when I put my glitter in it and I go on my next coat, it's not going to move. It's just easier for me to, to add another layer. Okay, this is a pretty strong light. That is long enough. <laughs> now I'm gonna go pretty. into base. It's cute just like that, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna overpower it. I'm just gonna put a few. So I put base on. So this is adding another layer so you get that depth later. Yes. So I think what I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna take them out and I like to do this because I just like thin pieces. 
Now, look at what it looks like on white. It's very yellow, but yeah. on dark, it's gonna emit like a bluey purple. So I don't really use this on light colors much, but check it out. Yeah, it's more like clear, you can see the color. And underneath. it's kind of purpley blue. Oh yeah, yeah. There it is. So let's place these in some places that I want them to facet. So I love this brush for this. See how easy it picks up? I'm yeah. so happy they came out with this brush. It's one of my faves. Then I'm gonna get a little more slivers of another color and this mm -hmm. is going to emit blue. Oh yeah, look at that. Then I'm gonna come in here and see how it doesn't pick up a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I love this little, especially if you're freestyling like this and you just don't wanna pour it on and have a whole bunch on there. Mm -hmm. oh, I like her already. Okay, cool. Let me push these down with my orange wood stick. Okay, I think what I wanna do now is cure it and then add some of my hearts and maybe overlap a mylar, I don't know, let's see. But because I'm doing it so thin, I'm able to get a lot of depth in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more base coat and it's kind of cold, it's winter right now. So as you can see, my gel looks a little chunky at first, but it self levels nicely. nicely. Yeah. I think I'm gonna pick this up because I just wanna pick up one at a time. Get a little gel on my orange wood stick and I'm gonna place them different directions. That silver is so pretty in there. Let me see if the pink's gonna look just as good. Let me try one. And then I'm gonna <laughs> do one more silver. Okay, so see how I move it? That's what makes me make up my mind what I want in there. Um, I don't wanna overpower, I still kinda wanna see through my nail. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna move them a little more. I actually like the heart showing, what do you think? It's cute. Cute. Like it. Okay, I'll flash this real quick. Flash set. And again, if I'm doing a set, my client goes under the light. I don't have to help her. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna close this because I'm going to go into, guess what? Build Bill Pink. pink. <laughs> <laughs> I know I love Bill Pink. <laughs> so I'm gonna come in here. Just squeeze it till it gets close to my cuticle. And I'm gonna kind of bring it up so it has volume in the middle. You could see it start magnifying. Yes. Okay, so now I'm gonna come over here. All I'm gonna do is take it from the side and whip it to one side. This is probably the easiest way to get gel on with the volume. Okay, now it's starting to run a little there, but not real fast, because it's colder. Mm -hmm. So I actually just had a question someone asked about hard gel. Yes. This specifically, they wanted to know like what you tell your clients when they say they don't want it that thick. Oh my God, like, I love this question. <laughs> It's, it's a typical question, and I, I probably would ask the same thing if I've never seen this done. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and cure this. I'll do 60, because I'm gonna final cure it. So usually what I tell them is I don't like it either. It's kind of the process when you encapsulate. Sometimes I go a little thicker than I need, because if it's perfect with the mylar somewhere, then it could chip out, and typically it does if I have them sticking up, but I'm also able to get that arch that I need in, and really the only spots you have to file is like here or here. Mm -hmm. And it's gel. It comes in very easy. I feel like when I do acrylic, the process is much prettier. So I don't get that comment much with, yeah. with acrylic, but with gel I do just because the volume of it. So it's just trusting the process, pretty much. Thank you. Wipe my nail. Okay, so what I like to do, I'm on 12,000 RPMs and I like to typically just make contact with my nail and my file do the work for me from there. But I usually do an open palm, come in right here and lightly touch. So I'm not putting any pressure, all I'm doing is contact, I'm shaping the nail. If I could get away with not hand filing so much, I'll do it and this is how I avoid it. So now I'm gonna do my eye formation. I like to go around my cuticle first. For my eye formation, it kind of gives me an idea of how thick my nail really is. And as you can see, it really is more tight here and I can see the thickness coming in here. So I'll go down to like zone two and then I'll come in with zone three of my bit. And I have slight pressure here to so no pressure now. Let the bit do the work for you. The reason why I did slight pressure here is because I have a lot of product. There's another trick I like to do. I like to turn my client's hand around and Sally's a little stiff, so she's gonna look kind of big here. I like to look at it in this direction, especially when I have a custom shape because I tend to favor a side. And I'll come in and put this kind of file off some of the side that's my widest. And then I'll just follow this pattern from here. 
So now I know I can file with confidence. It's just a little trick I do. And a person's just as easy like this. Like they just go like this, it's very easy. So now I'm gonna look down the barrel of it. Now if someone out there, me for example, is scared to use the X cut bit like you're using, yeah. uh, what other bits would you recommend for shaving? And Safety bit, I mean, majority of people use it. I learned on X cut, so it's my go-to. I'll tell you the benefits of it. Do you see how I could come up straight on her sides here and how straight I can make her sidewalls? Mm -hmm. um, the safety bit could do it about to there, then the round will stop you. No big deal. I know a lot of people, all they use is the safety bit. I think it's a brilliant bit that Young Nolls brought out. So what I'm gonna do from here, go through my, this case, four point filing, cause it's one, two, three, four. So mm -hmm. as you can see how straight I get it here, do you notice how I put my fingers here? I kind of put pressure at the same time up and towards so they don't feel like tugging or sore nails when I'm done with them. And then this, when I put my client's hand like this, I put my finger right here. So it kind of anchors it as well. And when you do a longer set, a lot of people complain that their nails are sore. It's because the fingernails aren't braced, if that makes sense. Okay, so the pressure kind of helps. With that. Yeah, it stops the little jiggly of filing. And I've actually had my nails like back in the day when someone's done them be very sore for like a couple days. And it's just because they filed like this and like this and never braced. So like what about when you're doing this, how do you keep from like cutting the client? So, good question. I take another file. Let me see if I have one right here. Yeah, I'll just use this one. And you come like this and take off in a clean file and take off your sharp edges on the sides. That right there will ensure it's not going to cut and see how I'm even pushing hard. Mm -hmm. It won't cut you and so you can file with confidence. I feel like a lot of people that don't do that, they don't get tight enough because they're afraid they're going to cut them. Yeah. So it's just a simple trick. Okay, now client profile, boom. Let's see, I'm gonna kind of put her like this. Clean up her cuticle a little. And here I'm not putting any pressure, I'm just using my file and letting it bring it in. Okay, that's sharp. I want it to look sharp, but not feel sharp. Yeah. Feel it? It doesn't feel no, sharp, yeah. but it has that. It looks like, yeah, yeah. Has the look of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right here, I want to show the camera this. So when you hold it like this and you hold flat, you see how one's higher and one's lower? It has to feel fit flat on there. So that means one side's hanging. So I, I usually come like this. And I spend time in the middle because that's where it's a little low. And then I make sure, see how it's all connected? That's how I get my nails really tight and straight from every direction, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna dust her off. Then I'm gonna go into swipe to cleaner. Okay, so I take this and I put it on 6,000 RPM. And I just come around the cuticle area. And you'll kind of see on the training hand how it kind of fixes too. See how it's coming in really good, the little bit that's coming off? Mm -hmm. It just makes it flawless. Okay, so after that, I am going to go into Protein Bond. Okay, so I'll go into Stain Resistant. I like Stain Resistant a lot. It's a really hard gel top coat that stays shiny the whole time Tell you come, when they come back, they look this shiny. So it kind of advertises for me while my clients are out there shopping and doing their thing. So I love stain resistant. So now I'll cure this. I like to cure it for two full minutes. And the reason being it cures in 60 for a couple reasons I like to do that. I feel like it brings it shiny for some reason. It may or may not, maybe it's in my head, but it stays really shiny. But it gives me enough time to clean up everything. So when she comes out, I'm ready to swipe their fingers or whoever I'm doing, swipe their fingers and um, get paid after that. Two little birds, rose oil. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna take swipe. So Melissa. Yes. Knowing what I know and how many products you use, what would you charge for, I guess, this one nail and then like, like the if you were to do it in a set, yeah. Okay, so in add-ins, let's see, I did two liquid arts. Um, I charge $10 per color of liquid art. So that would be a $20 mix. Okay. $10 is great too if someone wants to charge that, but that'd be 20, 30, 40, five, 
50, 55 in add-ins. That's all I put in there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, $55 in my upsell. So a lot of people charge per glitter and that's included in their dimension. Mm -hmm. That's totally fine, I think that's great. But after you're totally full, you've been doing it a long time and stuff starts costing more or you're buying more, you could give yourself a raise. I now charge per dimension, so that would be $10 for the dimension. So 10, 20, 30, 40, five, it'd be $55 for one now. If I did two, it'd be 65, 75 on top of their look. You can't start like re really huge when you're first learning because you don't have the confidence yourself. Mm -hmm. As you learn more and more, I feel like people feel more comfortable giving their self raises. But that is how I pay for more education, how I buy more product for my clients. So that's it. And then we talked earlier about mixing with liquid art and like saving it for later. So if someone were to pick that color that you already pre-mix later, would you I charge, would charge the same? 10? Just great 10. question. That is such a great question. So even if all of these were mixed and I had to pick some out of it, that would be a $5 instead of yes. individual. But as what I did in front of you, I call it freestyling. Mm -hmm. That means I'm not sure what I'm going to do. They gave me an inspiration. They said they wanted like a glass nail, see-through kind of stained glass and maybe a purple color or like something Valentine's. So I pick these to go with it. I'm freestyling, I'm doing it in front of them. So yeah. Thanks. You're welcome.